All right, guys. Well, the big news this week, if you might have heard it already, is the Ronin network was hacked for more than $600 million, making it the biggest DeFi hack in history um, and certainly on the level of Mount Gov. Now, we're a few more years into crypto, um, so the fact that this isn't a bigger deal just shows that hacks are going to be a problem moving forward and it's one of the most concerning things about DeFi. So what happened? Um, 600 million was stolen. The weirdest part of this whole story is that they didn't notice it for six days and that's a big problem. So uh, the Rona network is built on, um, was, was actually built on top of the Ethereum blockchain so that transactions could be a lot uh, less expensive for people that were playing the game because in the last while, Ethereum has gotten out of hand, particularly gas fees. And so that's a problem. So that's the main reason that they created the uh, the Ronin network. Now, this has big ramifications for Axie moving forward, or I should say for Sky Mavis moving forward, because their big idea, what their plan was, was to sell the Ronin Bridge to other, or, or basically sell the project um, so that other NFT games could use their Ronin network and choose it in order to onboard their games and their users faster. So it'd be a different game. Um, and it would also, they would make the Ronin network accessible for these other games. So that's kind of a problem. So what happened was, um, here's basically what happened. This has been updated with uh, with some uh, some points. Now this is the Ronin newsletter. This is actually the, uh, so the basically the uh, first post uh, about it. And uh, it's a brand new newsletter. And so they've figured this out. So basically, it was um, a socially engineered flaw. Um, they've all these funds have been drained. So nothing to do with the. It was just wrapped Ethereum uh, or Ethereum, I should say, that was stolen, and USDC. So it didn't touch any of the uh, SLP or any of those. Um, uh, the AXS or anything like that. And surprisingly, um, SLP has been holding its value. This is the last 30 days. So as you can see, um, when the news broke, there was certainly a dip, but things are, are still moving in the uh, in the right direction. Um, in the last 24 hours, it's up 36%. If we look at uh, AXS, the governance token, we're going to find a similar thing. Um, there has certainly been um, been a drop. Um, and yeah, so it's, it's kind of continued. Now, the in, another interesting thing is that the hacker actually shorted the price of uh, SLP af uh, when this hack happened, after this hack happened, but nobody knew about it um, because, and that's, and that's a key problem that we're going to be talking about here. So basically the bridge was exploited for 173,000 Ethereum and 25 million in USDC. So they've halted the bridge. They're working with you know, law enforcement, uh, forensic cryptographers to make sure that, that um, it's back. Now, the interesting thing about crypto is this is the address that has the crypto. Um, so it's interesting that you can kind of see like there's this hack happened, but it's still a public thing where you can actually see what the balance is in this account and we can see in the future where this is moving um and i'm not sure what this ronin bridge exploiter is um but all of it is just basically sitting there um stolen so if i were the hacker i would be a little bit nervous because now all the eyes are on you where are you going to move this even though it's it's been done so the way this was happened was the chain consists of nine validator nodes um, and in order to recognize a deposit or withdrawal five of nine signatures are needed so the attacker got um control over sky mavis's four validators and then a third party validator run by daxi um, axi dao so 
that's pretty interesting. Um, so they found a backdoor through the um, RPC node, which they uh, abused in order to uh, to get that. And this is back to um, when they were working on, um, they requested Axie DAO to help distribute free transactions because of a, a user um, uh, immense load. And they were bringing out the RON token at this time. Um, so they, uh, they basically allowed Sky Mavis to sign transactions on its behalf. And when they discontinued it, the allow access was not revoked. So that's how they got the, uh, the fifth. Now they have changed this in since so that now it needs eight validators out of the nine. Um, and so that's, uh, that's very important. They're in touch with the security teams and they're migrating all the, all the nodes. Upgrading the infrastructure, uh, the bridge is is paused right now, and they've uh, disabled the the Katana Dex, um, basically because it's gone. So they figured it was gone when there was a user that was trying to withdraw 500 Ethereum, and uh, it didn't go through. So that's when they noticed things uh, were gone. So that's kind of a, a an issue. Um, so just talking about the big picture here. This is a huge issue um, with DeFi, and it's something that we need to look into um, moving forward. Now, the other thing about, just because I mentioned DeFi, is these projects aren't fully DeFi, and they're not fully centralized. I mean, obviously, if it was completely DeFi, then where would be the infrastructure to you know, take control of this. And that's one of the things I'm most concerned about about DeFi is if there is a problem with a smart contract or how thing, something is set up in the first place, um, if it's totally DeFi, how's that gonna be, how's that gonna be fixed? Um, so here, so they did five of nine thresholds, so they didn't, uh, you know, they weren't stuck and things like that. You can see most of the funds are still in the hacker's wallet, which is, uh, which is crazy. So we looked at that there. Um, and yeah, so all of this stuff is open to exploitation, to being hacked. It's one of the reasons you've got to keep your private keys. And again, this is going to push more people towards having a cold wallet. That's certainly something that, that I would recommend. Um, so they discovered it here uh, after a user was unable to withdraw 5,000 Ethereum from, from, the, uh, from the bridge. So they've turned off the, uh, the comments for this. However, on Twitter, the comments are still going. And you can see here that um, just on May 27th, so this is after the hack happened before they have discovered it, you can see that they were talking about make sure you get your RON uh, to your RON uh, wallets on, on Tuesday. Um, so this is related to the hack in the sense that the free transactions are related to um, when they launched Ron, you didn't need to have Ron, and there was this grace period where the transactions would still be free, and now they're going to require a small amount of Ron. It's not going to be a huge amount, but it is going to be a small amount of, of Ron. So this, this bridge has been exploited, um, and <laughs> here's the, what they're doing now. Um, so they've updated the, uh, the sub stack. Uh, they're they're trying to, you know, work with chain and chain analysis uh, to monitor the stolen funds um, and handle the forensics and things like that. They've committed that they're going to ensure all the drained funds are going to be recovered or reimbursed, but we'll have to see how that um, how that plays out. Interestingly, at the time of the of the hack, uh, Jiho was speaking at this NFT conference in LA. Um, so, you know, uh, you know, there's definitely going to be some things to, uh, to talk about. Um, and there does need to be, you know, stronger infrastructure, uh, in these, in these gaming communities. Um, because hours after his dis discussion here, he's speaking at the, at a conference and they've revealed that their, their funds, um, have been, uh, exploited and stolen. So that should bring you up to date with, uh, the DeFi hack. And, you know, it is interesting to, uh, to understand that, you know, this is going to be remembered for its size, but I mean, also by the lack of awareness of the Ronin team. Now, 
Personally, the Ronin team, I think they do some things extraordinarily well. But obviously, when they were fixing all that stuff before, um, they took their eye off the ball in terms of SLP and making sure that was a viable token for their users. Also here, um, you know, they seem to be, you know, pushing this forward and trying to, you know, do everything for the Ronin network. And there are some pretty big gaps there um, and, and some huge lack of awareness. So um, what's going to happen with this? I'm not sure. Um, but as you can see, the price of the uh, tokens in the Axie universe are still moving forward. Um, I would expect that to, to still go through. It is a heck of a lot of money that got stolen. So that should bring you up to date with what's going on with the Axie Infinity Ronin network hack. And if you have any questions, hit me up in the comments. I'll put some of these links in the description so that you can read more about what's going on uh, with this hack.